Hello everyone, my name is Adam Vox. welcome back to another Ubuntu VirtualBox tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up K-Ubuntu with the KDE Plasma 5.5 desktop environment in VirtualBox. You will of course need VirtualBox, link in the description below. You will need K-Ubuntu in the description below. And go ahead and open up VirtualBox. We're going to go to new, we're going to call it Kubuntu 1604. You can call it whatever you like. Make sure you have Linux and Ubuntu 64-bit selected and click next. Give it how much memory you would like to give it. I've covered this in the previous tutorials, but it shows a spectrum of how much memory you have. The maximum it will let me give is 25 gigs. I have 32 gigs total, total of memory. I only recommend going up to half of your memory if that. I give mine 8 gigs. Um, it, the, the reason is, is whatever memory you give the virtual machine, the rest of the things going on in your computer don't have that, that memory. So... If you're doing other things or trying to use both PCs at once, you, you need that memory reserve. Click next. Create a hard disk now. Default is fine. Dynamic is fine. That is fine. Uh, default is 8 gigs. I usually bump it up to 10 to 12. That is 15 is fine, I guess. I'm going to be deleting it anyway, but however much space, keep in mind, it won't take up that much space at first on your hard drive, but if you fill up with files in the virtual box, it will take up that space at some point. It's uh, we're not ready to start yet. Go to settings and advanced is where you can enable enable the shared clipboard for copying text and clipboard data like images between your host OS, which is what your computer is actually running, like Windows, Mac or another version of Linux and the guest operating system, which in this case is K Ubuntu. You can enable it host to guest, guest to host or bidirectional. Same thing with dragging and dropping of files. I'm going to leave them disabled for right now to make it easier. You can add a description of your virtual box and you can encrypt the entire thing, which is going to be, get a bit redundant because you can encrypt the virtual machine. You can encrypt your entire installation and you can encrypt your home folder. So if you want triple step encryption and encrypt your windows installation, you can be super safe. I guess Go over here to system. That's how much memory is allocated again. I always uncheck floppy drive because nothing I'm going to be using will use a floppy drive. Over here in processors, you can allocate how many processor cores you have, up to half. It'll freak out if you give it more than half. One is also fine, although the more you give, the faster it'll be. But keep in mind, again, the more you give it, the less the rest of your computer will have to operate with. Acceleration. Leave these by default on default, but if you have issues with it popping up some weird errors, which I'll probably end up having to show you as this goes on, then you may want to check or uncheck these depending on you know, whether or not they're checked already. Usually unchecking enabled nested paging helps me, but I'm still getting the errors anyway, so it doesn't entirely fix the issue. Go over here to display, crank this slider all the way up. VirtualBox is a free software and only thus they've only let us support up to 128 megs of graphics memory, which really sucks. My, ca my graphics card has four gigs, which would be great to allocate to the virtual machine, but I cannot with this software. Then you can also enable a scale factor of up to 300% to make it look nicer on your machine. But keep in mind that will also blur it out a bit. So you have pixelization or tiny text and icons versus blurring, just like normal stupid Windows scaling. Then you can enable 3D acceleration. 2D acceleration is not supported for Ubuntu, but then if you do like a Windows guest, uh, only 2D is supported and not 3D and it gets kind of funky. Or you can leave them both off. I do 3D. And then you can also assign it how many monitors you have up to eight. I just leave it on the one. That way if you want a VM on one monitor and the rest of your computer on the other. It's like you're using two computers at once. Kind of cool. Here you can set up remote connections, server stuff in case you want to connect to it from another computer. And you can tell VirtualBox to actually capture video itself. However, I can't imagine it does a good job at it. And I instead recommend using NVIDIA Shadow Play, Fraps, OBS, DX Story, anything like that. Storage. This one's your hard drive. This one, the CD icon, is what your ISO, your downloaded K Ubuntu installer needs to be. So click this CD icon. Choose Virtual Optical Disk and find your ISO file. Mine is right here, K Ubuntu. Go over here to Audio. Default should be fine. If you know what you're doing or experimenting with issues based on forum posts or something, you can change these. Same for all of these. Shared folders is where you can enable folders from your host operating system from Windows or whatever to show up in Ubuntu. For me, I haven't had any success with this actually working. It's supposed to work. Your results may vary. And then user interface changes what VirtualBox options you see and where they show and all that jazz. I'm just going to leave everything at the default, hit OK, and start up my virtual machine with the screen start arrow. 
when it first starts up and when you run through the installer process. It will be in this tiny, tiny little 480p or 360p window and be square. Don't freak out. It won't stay like that. And once we get the actual operating system installed, we're going to be installing an extra set of drivers and software called VirtualBox Guest Editions, which is going to give it more functionality to work better with your computer, work better with the VirtualBox, and display your full resolution if you'd like. This is that error I was talking about, SM bus, base address, upgrade BIOS, blah, blah, blah. Messing with those uh, processor options might help that. According to forum posts I've read, I've not actually gotten any success fixing it. So sometimes I just kind of have to keep killing my virtual box and turning it back on to see if it works. Here you can see the lovely KDE Plasma 5.5 desktop environment. It is quite beautiful and quite flashy. Starting up here for us to get set up and going. All right, uh, we are here within the live boot of KUbuntu. It automatically jumps to the live installation. And then for whatever reason, this desktop slider thing is super tiny and we can't rescale it or anything, but this is the install option. So if we click it, it should start up the installer. They really need to work on this. I hope someone, I, I hope someone sees this and fixes this because this is obnoxious. But clicking that will start the installer. And it does look a little bit different here. English. Choose your language, of course. English is mine. Click continue. You can read the release notes and update changes if you like. This is the long-term support version. You can download updates while installing. I do not recommend this. It will take a lot longer during installation, but supposedly save time after. But it can also cause a lot more issues with the actual installation because your system's more vulnerable while you're installing it than afterwards. So I just don't recommend doing it. I do recommend installing the third-party software stuff. This will install non-open source codecs video codecs, audio codecs, and drivers for your graphics card, for your Wi-Fi hardware, things like that. It will save you a lot of time and frustration if you do this. They just can't enable it by default because these things aren't open source. But for graphics cards, Wi-Fi cards, and playing MP3s and flash files, definitely want that checked. Click continue. All right. Now there's a few different ways you could set this up. This is where you can also enable to entirely encrypt your disk partitions and set up a security key. So if you're interested in security, you can do it that way. For most users actually watching this tutorial, using guided use entire disk is all you need to use, or you can set up manual partitions and stuff. Or like I said, most people actually watching this tutorial use entire disk guided works fine. Click install now. If you're installing this on a physical computer, it's going to give you an option to install it alongside your actual operating system, such as Windows or another version of Linux. You can mess with that. Keep in mind, you have to be very careful and read every step carefully, including this one where it pops up saying it's going to destroy your entire hard drive and replace it with, with K-Ubuntu, or else you're going to get rid of your Windows or whatever you have running. So be very careful, and this is why I recommend everyone start in a virtual box. That way, it is a safe learning environment. Click continue if you know what you're doing, and this is right. Give it time to start making your disk partitions. These are just how it sets up the file system. Choose your... Ow, I hit my ring. Choose your time zone. This is fine for me. It says Alaska. It's Eastern, though. Alaska is all the way over here. That was weird. Okay, continue. Thankfully, KUbuntu actually starts installing while you're doing these settings. The other versions don't seem to do that, and that's really obnoxious. It wastes a lot of time. Check out your keyboard layout, and it actually gives you a nice little visual preview of your keyboard layout. US is mine, so that's fine. Continue. User information. You will want to give it your name. Adam's fine. Username. That's fine. Password. There we go. Computer name. This will show up on your network and to other computers. That's fine. I'll be deleting it, but you can call it whatever you want, such as Kubuntu VBox. That way you know what this machine is. You can require your password to log in, which I recommend for everyone on their personal computers. Since this is a virtual box for me and it's for educational purposes and I don't want I'm, I'm going to be deleting it in about five minutes, I'm going to choose to log in automatically. But for everyone else, I recommend at least require my password to log in. And if you're going to be storing any sort of personal or sensitive data, you may want to consider using the encrypt my home folder option. This mean is, means if someone gets on as another user or as a guest, they won't actually be able to see your home folder and all your data. Click continue. And then now it's going to finish installing and show you just some basic stuff about thank you for choosing K K Ubuntu. We believe every computer user should be free to work in the environment they choose and be free to download, change, study, and share their softwares with anyone for any purpose. We want KUbuntu to work for you. So while you, your software is installing, the slideshow will introduce you to KUbuntu 16.04. Enjoy the slideshow and wait for the installer to finish. 
I would like to note here as you're enjoying this slideshow, you will notice if you've installed other versions of Ubuntu that this actually installs a different set of default software somewhat than the normal Ubuntu installation. So that's kind of neat and gives you an opportunity to try out different software than the defaults, which is kind of cool. All right, once the installer finishes, just click Restart Now and let it restart your virtual box. This will take a couple minutes as well, depending on your system and whether or not you get errors like I do. Sometimes you gotta, re you gotta restart it a couple times. Something you wanna pay attention to is your storage tab up here in the actual virtual box manager. Uh, once it actually fully restarts, it should change your optical drive to empty and get rid of the ISO file. If not, you may want to shut down your virtual box Go to settings and clear that out, or it'll just keep booting the installer. Once you get booted into your KUbuntu VirtualBox, you are not ready just yet. We're going to go up here to Devices and insert that Guest Editions CD image I told you about before. I think I misclicked it. There we go. There we go. It should pop up Device Notifier. Open with File Manager. Unfortunately, it does not appear to have the normal auto-run capability, so what we're going to have to do here is go click your K menu, uh, go to Applications, System, Terminal, open up your Terminal Console Emulator here, and then type in, uh, type in CD, and then drag it in there, paste location, and then delete the dot run part, so go all the way up to the, f the last slash here, so delete the VBox Linux Editions part, hit enter, and then do sudo dot slash and then v box linux and then hit tab it will auto complete it again capitalization is very important and hit enter and it will start the installer process and then it's going to install the required software and drivers for you to run it and then you're going to need to restart your virtual machine here in a second once this completes this will take quite a few minutes though all right, once your VirtualBox Yes Editions have finished installing, you can I, you need to restart your machine. You can either go to Start, Leave, and then Restart, or even in the command prompt, you can just type sudo reboot and hit Enter, and it will restart your virtual machine. Make sure, again, in storage, your optical drive goes back to empty, and wait for it to reboot via VirtualBox. Again, this will take a couple minutes, depending on your system, yada, 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 yada. All right, and once you get back booted into the desktop, you should be able to just go to view full screen and get your full full screen resolution or customize it to your desire here. And boom, we're running it at full 4K 60. And then we pull up the effects. We can add, we can go to uh, computer system settings and we can start adding in the cool little animations and effects and all that jazz. And you are set up and good to go. So hope you enjoyed this video, guys. As always, be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed. Uh, uh, check out the playlist link in the description below. It's freaking out on me because it doesn't like 4K and VirtualBox has been a steaming pile of crap today. But be sure to subscribe for more awesome tech videos. Check the playlist link in the description below and in the YouTube card icon for more Ubuntu related videos and tutorials. And otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one.